brought to you by... We are all monsters in some way or another. Many of us have done or said things that there is no coming back from. However, some out there are merely labeled as such due to circumstances or characteristics that lie outside of their control. It's a horror of reality that there is no real escape from. On a cosmic level, it causes us to live in a prison of society's making, and it's one that most of us never find any means of escaping. <laughs> Hello friends, and welcome back to another ETF short film discussion. Gabrielle Rossin is a name that we have spoken of before. A while back, I talked about one of her previous short films, Salvation, in a video that I will link right up there. She is a talent that I find to be quite rare in the local independent film circuit. An artist true to the name and someone who crafts her work with a clear vision and something meaningful to say. Her latest film, Le Monstro, is an indie short narrative about unrequited love, beauty, and acceptance, and is inspired by the Victorian ape woman, Julia Pastrana, and her husband, Theodore Lent. In speaking with Gabrielle recently, she was able to provide me some significant backstory about Julia Pastrana, which of course I will share with you now for those who don't know the tale. Julia hailed from Mexico in 1834 and was born with hypertrichosis terminalis, a condition that caused her body to be covered with thick hair, and gingival hyperplasia, which resulted in thickened lips and gums. Due to these conditions, she was often referred to as the ape woman in her time. Julia's life took a significant turn when she was discovered by an American showman and brought to the United States, where she began her career in freak shows, being exhibited as a curiosity. Despite the exploitation, Julia was noted for her intelligence, musical talent, and being fluent in Spanish. In 1854, she met Theodore Lent, who became her manager and later her husband. Lent was a German showman known for his harsh and exploitive treatment of Julia. Under his management, Julia's exhibition became more widespread, touring Europe and the US. She performed songs and dances, and even participated in theatrical performances, though always framed within the context of her unusual appearance. Tragically, Julia died in 1860 due to complications during childbirth, and her child, who inherited her conditions, died shortly after. Lent, driven by greed, embalmed both Julia and their child, and continued to exhibit them. Lent wound up remarrying another woman with similar conditions, but his last years were marked by a decline in mental health, which ultimately led to his institutionalization. Julia Pastrana's remains continued to be exhibited until the 20th century, drawing significant controversy. After years of efforts to reclaim her dignity, Julia's body was finally repatriated to Mexico in 2013, where she was given a proper burial. Now, before I get into the film itself, it's worth noting that the version of the film that I initially watched for this video was a picture-locked cut of the film, without final color and such, so I will be taking that into account. Immediately, we are enveloped into an almost hauntingly beautiful and traditional score composed by Ian Raskin. He treats his compositions here with a very delicate hand, using the music to guide us through these moments in the life of Juliet and the emotional turmoil that she faces. A fluid camera motion introduces us to our protagonist, renamed Juliet here, played with such emotional depth by Gabrielle Rossin herself. However, the beauty of this introduction is that it is layered with purpose. We are meeting Juliet indirectly, 
through her visage reflected back to us through a pair of mirrors, as she sits getting ready for her performance. Not only reflecting on what she is about to do, but on who she sees looking back at her. It's no accident that one of these two mirrors is set lower in the frame, its gaze focusing on her beard. Out of the two mirrors, this is the one we see first, which to me speaks measures. This is a woman who, throughout her entire life, people have only seen that which makes her different first, many of whom could and would never look past that one aspect of herself, to see the beauty of the person that lies beneath. It's very fitting that Rawson chooses to introduce her to us in this same manner, as it gives us the opportunity to try and look past her physical differences and see who she is as a person as the plot unfolds. The choice to dress her in a classic black and white stripe pattern is a stroke of brilliance to me. Some may look at it as a slightly Burton-esque influence, but but I saw it as a symbol of imprisonment on her delicate shoulders. She is bound to this one aspect of herself that has come to define her entire life. In these opening moments alone, I found an emotional turmoil brewing within her eyes, a dislike for what she sees reflected back to her, and this only grows more prominent through the course of the film. Maybe this is due to everything that Rawson is pouring into this part, or maybe it's just how expressive her eyes can be. These first moments with Juliet are punctuated by the song of a bird that sits beside her, it itself trapped in a cage, another more obvious symbol of what she saw in the mirror, something beautiful locked inside against its will, with no hope of escape. It's fitting that she is pulled away from this moment with the bird by what I can assume is a stage manager, a reminder that the life she is trapped in will always pull her back from the brief moments of happiness she may feel. As she is introduced onto the stage, there is a hollow emptiness in her eyes. She does not turn her gaze to those spectating her arrival, ignorant to the gasps of disbelief, as if she is numb to all of it at this point. Her makeup is layered heavily, as if adorned to mask what remains of the beautiful person she is that might shine through, reducing her in a way to nothing more than a performing clown. When she reaches the stage, she begins to sing, the mesmerizing voice of an angel breaking free. I love that we hold on her in this moment letting it sink in that such beautiful music is coming from what many at the time would have described as a freak. We never showcase an audience in a traditional sense. We can hear their presence when she's introduced, but we do not see them, causing a separation between the rest of society and Juliet, who sits up on her proverbial pedestal. Her performance continues into an elegant, ballet-like dance, and our focus remains solely on her. It's almost as if she is able to feel free in this moment, invisible to the world that forever gawks at her existence. However, following this moment of freedom, where somewhere inside she likely feels that she can truly be accepted for who she is, as the curtains are drawn, she shares a moment with Lent, a moment where he intimately caresses her face and she goes in for a kiss. We watch his expression shift from marvel at her beauty to disgust, reminding her of what the world thinks of her. We then see him follow her behind the curtain where she is undressing, and are left to assume that his lustful desires take over, and a feeling that it's fine for him to do so because it's metaphorically behind closed doors. Who's gonna know? Not a word is really spoken for the first half of this film's runtime, allowing us to be immersed in Juliet's situation through her perspective, which I found to be quite a bold choice. Once we do get dialogue, I have to say it was the most elegantly written, as Juliet bares her soul and reveals a revelation to her unrequited love that we know he will never accept. Visually, the film's cinematography is perfected through elegant motion and composition. As I said, this version didn't have final color or anything, but from what I could tell, the color palette was being kept warm but dark and gloomy, which for me only grounds us into this prison that Juliet lives in. The warmth of her character influences these dark passages that she traverses, and her time on the stage, with the spotlight cast onto her, is like that light of day finally reaching her, in a time when she is most vulnerable, not just in performing, but in life. 
allowing her to be seen rather than kept behind closed doors like some kind of monster. More recently, Gabrielle shared with me a different edit of the film, one that she said was much closer to her original vision. This version sees the majority of the story presented in an elegant black and white, which to me was a little more fitting, showcasing an existence devoid of life and happiness. This look further emphasizes her imprisonment, making existence feel empty and hopeless. In this version, it isn't until we reach her flashback as we transition from her performance to the moment she shares with Lent that we shift into color. For me, this was likely one of the last remaining moments where she found happiness and solace, where even just for a brief moment, she felt the love of another, and through that love was gifted love unconditional. However, when we return to the present reality, the color once again drains away, because as history shows, its pages hold a bleak outcome. This story is one of utmost tragedy, as we witness only moments in the life of a woman who bore so much talent, and held so much to offer the world, yet never was able to fight her way past society's view of her. Gabrielle Rossin's performance here is the true highlight of the piece, as it is clear that she has poured so much into the emotional well of this character. It's clear to me that she was drawing from some real pain somewhere inside and channeling it here, delivering us the vision of a character so deeply rooted. This was a story that needed to be told, and one that she did with mastery and elegance. Well, friends, that's gonna be all for now. As always, take my opinion for what it's worth, but more importantly, formulate your own. Unfortunately, this film is not yet released, but once it has been, I will be linking it into the description of this video. Of course, subscribe here for more content. Until next time, stay safe, and as always, thanks for watching.